This is episode 113 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we're talking hormone and hunger with Samantha Gladish, an hormone expert and holistic nutritionist. My name is Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist. I reversed my diagnosis of anxiety, depression, adrenal fatigue, and obesity by going beyond the food. I can tell you one thing, that willpower, discipline, and deprivation aren't the permanent solution to transforming your relationship to food. So how do you leave overeating, emotional eating, food craving, and binging behind you so you have the food freedom to achieve all of your goal and be happy now? As a top 25 alternative health podcast in the world, this is the Beyond the Food Show. Hello, ladies. This is Stephanie Dozier. In today's episode, we're going to talk about something I have been wanting to talk about for a long time, but today is the day with the right guests. And we're going to talk about hormones and hunger and how your hormones can influence your hunger. But we're going to address the one thing you need to know that likely you do not know because people don't talk about that on how you can start controlling your hormones today so you can then control your hunger. And this very powerful discussion is going to be with Samantha. Samantha is a registered holistic nutritionist and she's titled herself an hormone fixer opper. And I love this title because that's what it is. We're going to not only teach you how to fix your hormone, but how to up your game and get ahead of yourself. And her philosophy is not just about changing food, but it's about how we think, how we move, and how we care for our body so that we can heal ourselves. And for me, you know me, it's what it's all about. It's beyond the food. That's why in Finding Samantha, that was the perfect guest to talk about hormone and hunger. And that's where the discussion gets really interesting because we're talking about something that, to be honest with you, I couldn't even pronounce properly, but it's a game changer. Because when we think of hormone, we do not talk about this but unfortunately, it's a major, major contributor to hormonal dysregulation. So I can't wait for you to learn this so that you can stop overeating and binging and having this distorted relationship with food so you can achieve your goal and be happy now. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that the Beyond the Food Academy is about to open its door for the first time for 2018 very shortly, but this time is going to be unique because I'm going to be delivering the Stop Self-Sabotage course for 12 weeks live with you. So it's going to be coaching every single week and Q&A call every single week, and we're all going to go through the course together. So this also means that the door to private coaching is opening at the same time as the academy, because since last year, all my private coaching clients have to be in the academy. So our focus on our private coaching session are very laser focused on behavior instead of delivering the basic content, which is now delivered through the academy. So you don't want to miss this opportunity. You can go to the show note at stephaniedodzie.com slash 113, and you will have the link to register ahead so you can be part of the first one to sign up for the Academy for 2018, because as you may remember, there is limited space for this time. And the Academy is all about how you can learn to go beyond the food so that you can resolve the food behavior without willpower and discipline so that you can live your life, be happy and achieve your goal. It's a life-changing experience and there's no dieting included in that. So are you ready to talk all things hormone? Let's do this, ladies. Ladies, welcome, Samantha. How are you, Samantha? I'm great. How are you doing? I am doing great, except that right now, as we I was just telling you off the air, this is the moment when we decided to clear the driveway with a big honking machine. So if you hear a noise in the back, 
that's what it is. <laughs> it's quiet on my end, so I'm good. Okay, so we'll let you talk. So welcome to the show. I am very excited to have you here. And I have to say, when I was talking about your bio, I love your hormone fixer upper title. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to interject some kind of, you know, silliness and some fun. So. I love that because we <laughs> take our hormones way too seriously. Totally. It's yes, either we, we have no clue <laughs> or right? we have too much clue. <laughs> right, right. There is it's not so any in between. <laughs> right, right. So we want to go to the in between today. That's the goal. So we're going to share with you all the hormones that are affecting your hunger, how they're being affected by the different things you choose to do. And stay with us at the end. We're going to have a three-step solution process with like a whole bunch of tool that Samantha, the hormone expert, has prepared for you. So let's dive right in. Let's talk about what are those hormones that affect our hunger. So there are a lot of them and there are so many different hormones that are at play here with our hunger and many of us might be familiar with ghrelin, which is what I like to refer to as the little gremlin. That's a simple way to remember it. And ghrelin is actually this very fast acting hormone in the body and it plays a vital role in increasing our appetite, even it plays a role with weight gain and it can really be involved with like meal initiation. So when you are actually hungry and when you're about to eat a meal, this hormone ghrelin typically rises right before your meal and it does fluctuate throughout the day. So if you've ever experienced like munchies, this is where ghrelin can come into play. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it also can come into play during stressful situations. So it's very much related and correlated with stress. And I mean, I don't know about you, but how many times have you ever been in a stressful situation and you've said to yourself, oh, I'm just going to eat a delicious, nice kale salad? Probably not, right? Most of us, really want to reach for something that's maybe a little bit more carb heavy or more sugar heavy. Maybe we want to reach for the wine during a stressful situation. And those foods, they really are involved with the pleasure reward system in the brain. And so is ghrelin. So now you have these two things at play here. You have ghrelin, which is also stimulating that sort of pleasure reward system as well as the stress. And now both of those things combined are typically going to cause you to maybe overeat or maybe just choose sort of more of the processed unhealthier foods because that's typically what we tend to go for when we are stressed. And so ghrelin also works with leptin. And leptin is actually the complete opposite of ghrelin. So whereas ghrelin is really the hunger hormone, leptin is more about suppressing the appetite. So it really does suppress the appetite and food intake. And it can definitely play a role with inducing weight loss, not necessarily. Leptin can actually, the amount that we produce can actually be in correlation with like our body fat percentage. But the good thing here is that both these hormones can be controlled naturally, which I will dive into in a moment because I really do want to talk about some of the other hormones that are at play here with our hunger. And that is cortisol, which is our stress hormone. And again, when we are stressed, typically we do want to reach for things like the pizza or the pasta or the wine. And being in a stressful situation can cause that cortisol to go up, cause us to overeat. But another thing that it actually does is typically when the cortisol is high, it can also cause our insulin to go high as well. And both insulin and cortisol, they're fat storing hormones. And so when it comes to really supporting body weight, we really do want to keep in mind what's going on with our insulin and our cortisol. And I know back in the day, I used to be such a sugar addict. Now, I didn't realize it at the time. I was really overeating a lot of carbohydrates and I didn't realize that that was really sugar. When I used to think of sugar, you know, when I was in my teens, I used to think of sugar as, you know, the sugar you add to your coffee. I wasn't really thinking about the rice I was eating or the pasta I was eating or things like that. And so because I was overeating a lot of sugar, it does play a role in 
causing a lot of blood sugar imbalances and really having an impact on your insulin levels and driving up the insulin. And when the insulin is high, when your blood sugar is irregular, this is really going to cause you to typically overeat. But not only that, you're also going to be really hungry just all of the time, which was me back in the day. I feel like I couldn't leave my house without having a snack on me or without having food with me. I just constantly felt hungry and I constantly felt like I just had to eat. And this, now that I know, obviously going through nutrition school and really diving into physiology and understanding hormones, what was really happening was that I was having a lot of blood sugar imbalances. And so by managing that insulin, then I managed to really combat those cravings that I was having and also stop me from like overeating. And it really gave me this like freedom Mm. where I always felt like, okay, I have to always have food on me. I always have to be like planning my meals. When am I going to eat? And whereas now, because I've really managed that blood sugar regularity and I'm not craving all the sugar and I've been getting more of the good healthy fats and the good proteins and just eating, you know, more whole foods, then that blood sugar really balanced out. And now I just have this freedom where I can like go out for my day and run my errands and not have to be overly consumed with always having to eat. So it's like a cascade effect, right? It's like insulin induce cortisol and induce ghrelin and it's like a vicious circle. 100%, which is why stress management is so important. And it's so challenging too, because, you know, when we think of something like eating better or exercising, like we can really put like a plan of action in place with that. But when we think about stress, it's kind of like, Mm -hmm. how do you really do that? Right? It's such a hard thing to kind of grasp, but it's ultimately so important for overall hormonal health, energy, vitality, everything, right? It's beyond the food. 100%. (laughs) And I always tell my clients, you know, it's getting healthy, achieving our optimal weight, feeling vital, being hormonally balanced, you know, all of these things, it's beyond the food on the plate and it's beyond the weight on the scale. Like it goes so much deeper than that. And so if we really truly want to have that real healing and transformation take place, then we really want to be conscious of bringing in these stress management techniques 100%. And we'll dive more into that in the later part. For sure. And then there's, of course, estrogen and progesterone and our cycle. And it's really amazing once you start to tune into your cycle and really understand you know, where you are in your cycle, are you in your follicular phase, ovulation, luteal, once you kind of understand this and understand the hormones that are at play, you become so much more intuitive with your body and the signals that it's sending you. So for example, for some women who may be just unfamiliar with it, so we pretty much are in our follicular phase, pretty much right when we start our period. And this phase will last for about, you know, 15, 14 days. And then we ovulate during typically in a 28 day cycle, you would typically ovulate around that day 14, 15 day, and then you would go into your luteal phase. So during the first phase, those first sort of 15 days, you've got your period, you are typically feeling a little bit maybe more on the tired side. Everyone obviously experiences different symptoms with their cycle. But after your period actually ends, your estrogen and your testosterone increase, and you kind of just feel this like lightness kind of come over your body as your period ends. And that's typically estrogen and testosterone that's now kind of like kicking into high gear. And typically during this first part of your cycle is when you pretty much feel like superwoman. Like you are just feeling like you can take on the world and you've got so much more energy. This is typically where I like to tell a lot of my clients to, you know, head to the gym and you've got that energy. And typically your body is, I don't want to necessarily say more balanced when it comes to food, but typically estrogen and testosterone don't have much of an impact the way that progesterone does. Because progesterone is what I like to call the fat cat of hormones, whereas estrogen is like the sex kitten of hormones. Mm, so, I love that. <laughs> so estrogen is like the sex kitten where it keeps us juicy and it helps build the uterine lining. It supports our moods and it keeps them elevated. Whereas progesterone, more of that like 
fat cat. And that's really what comes into play during the second phase of our cycle after we ovulate. That's where we tend to feel a little bit more slower. And that's the hormone that wants us to really slow down. We want to get on the couch and kind of cuddle up. And this is where a lot of the cravings can come into play because this is the time right before our period is about to start again, right? So this is where we really can get more of the cravings, more of the irritability. Our estrogen has now dropped, which is causing our progesterone to really have more of an impact with our moods. And we we feel a little bit more irritable and whatnot in our bodies and sometimes uncomfortable. And this is really what's going to cause us to typically want to reach for you know more food. So it's important to really just monitor where you kind of are in your cycle and like what's really happening. Typically during that second half of our cycle, you know, just before we're getting our period, that week or two prior, I always tell women that you really want to make sure you're getting enough magnesium into your body. And this is typically why women actually tend to crave a lot of chocolate, because Mm -hmm. what we're really craving is the magnesium. And the magnesium is such an important mineral. It is involved in over 300 detoxification processes in the body. I like to say when you take magnesium, it's like your body takes this really big sigh of relief. Mm-hmm. And it's so good for stress management, for sleep, for anxiousness and irritability. So typically that magnesium can really help support some of those cravings that you might have during that second half of the cycle. And more than that, it's also going to help with any type of cramping that you may have and that irritability that you may have as well. It's very interesting the way you're explaining it. And I think you're doing a brilliant job at it. So we can really tell that you're the expert in this. Because when I relate this to how the human brain deals with hunger, it's really a survival mechanism, right? When we get right to the bottom of it, we eat to survive. Yes, 100%. And our hormones are used to actually have those action of survival that we think of estrogen and progesterone, the way you're explaining it, like, we want to have sex so we can make baby. That's the reason why we have a uterus, right? Exactly. So we have this high and and we want to get a male or something that's going to give us a baby. And then the progesterone makes us have this motherly aspect to us. So we're like caring for this new life that we have in front of us. And the same thing goes with cortisol. I think it's a brilliant way of explaining it. And it correlates to the way we deal with food. 100%. Yes, I very love that. interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, and and you know, I always say too, you made a good point there about like hunger and like starvation and eating and and like survival mechanism and like I always tell my clients, especially when it comes to managing insulin, because it is such like a master hormone in the body. If you can really support and manage your blood sugar and your insulin levels, you can manage your cravings better. It will have this cascade, this sort of like domino effect in the body, and it will actually improve the estrogen and the progesterone and the testosterone. So when we really look at supporting hormones, oftentimes women are like, oh, something is up with my estrogen or something's up with my progesterone. It's not that we just want to look at those hormones. We also want to go back and be like, okay, what's going on with the cortisol? What's going on with the insulin? Because these are actually having a direct impact on the sex hormones. And so one of the things that I like to tell with my clients, especially when it comes to this survival mechanism of like hunger and, oh my God, I got to eat and feeling this like, this almost like desperation to have to eat. I tell my clients to really try and cut out the snacking and to be more conscious of getting in that good fat and the good protein and all of those good vegetables at your meals and making sure you're eating enough at your meals so that it can sustain you so that you don't have to feel like you're constantly grazing all the time. Because that constantly grazing all the time and snacking all the time is what spikes our insulin. The more we eat, the more the insulin goes up. (laughs) So if we can actually spread out our meals and have enough food, we can then balance out the blood sugar much better. And that's not going to cause us to be in this mode of like, I have to eat, I have to eat, I have to eat. And another thing to keep in mind there too, is that your body, when you're hungry, and I tell my clients too, like when you're cutting out the snacking, or you're just trying to minimize some of that snacking, if you get hungry, like it's okay. It's okay. We often don't know what it even feels like to be empty because we're so consumed with having to eat all the time. So if we can just tune into those feelings of like 
emptiness and that hunger, it's just such a great way to become more intuitive with your body and to really see like what's going on, what might need to be adjusted, making more adjustments with your meals and your macronutrients and making sure you're getting everything in there. It's just such a great way. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with being hungry. It's okay. And it's totally okay to feel that emptiness. I think it's brilliant because that's the whole philosophy behind the food is your craving are a message from your body. Yes. And we too often fear them, deny them, or hate them mm-hmm. if we don't listen to them. Totally. And yeah. listening to them is where the cue is to be in tune with your body so you can then make the adjustment to balance your hormone. If we think that balancing, and I know that's a huge topic for women, that simply taking a supplement or changing the way we eat is going to fix our hormone. It's not. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But totally, we got to listen and not fear hunger. And I know for me, I feared hunger because I was told when I first lost weight seven years ago that Mm -hmm. the number one thing to avoid is to be hungry because I could not be trusted when I was hungry. Right, right. So you were like disintegrated from your own signals of your body. Totally, because it was a typical fitness weight loss program where you ate six to seven times a day. So you never get hungry because you cannot be trusted to lose weight if you're hungry. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's so important. I love that you mentioned that. I just think that we need to create more of that space in our life. And that space also comes with some of that emptiness that we might feel with being hungry. And that hunger is going to allow us to really tune into, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm really hungry right now. What did I eat previously? You know, what may I be able to tweak and what can I change? And, and that's, what's going to allow you to really customize something for you and build something that works for you because we are all so biochemically different. And we are also individual and what works for one person doesn't work for everybody. And this is why it's so important to really have your intuition and to trust that intuition to create something for yourself that's really, truly going to work for you because no one else can really tell you except yourself. People like you can coach, like the nutritionists, we can coach, but we rely on you to tell us what's going on. Yes, 100%. So before we get into the solution part, what impacts our hormone? Like what is the trigger point that impact all those beautiful hormones that we just talked about? Well, the things that you can naturally use to control all these hormones are also the same things that can cause them to kind of be out of balance. So for example, your food, right? Mm -hmm. If we are overeating things like sugar, which is, again, I mentioned earlier, is going to trigger sort of that pleasure reward system in the brain, then that's going to trigger the hormones, that's going to cause issues with blood sugar, that's going to cause issues with ghrelin and potentially overeating. So sugar really does have a huge impact on our hormones. And and not only that, I mean, a lot of these hormones, they're produced in the gut, they need a healthy gut in order to be balanced. And if we're eating a lot of sugar, we are then destroying a lot of that good bacteria in our gut and really affecting the microbiome. And that microbiome, you know, the gut is like the second brain in our body and the gut communicates with the brain. Everything is interconnected. So not only is just the sugar having this impact specifically on the hormones, but it's impacting how our liver detoxifies, our liver metabolizes these hormones. So it's so important that we support liver function if we really want optimal hormonal health. And then of course, it is also impacting the gut health as well. Exercise. This can actually impact our hormones in a huge way. You know, the more you exercise, it's actually great for supporting insulin and how insulin actually communicates with the cells. And so exercise is so important for supporting hormonal health, managing stress, of course. Exercise is going to be a great stress management tool. But at the same time, oftentimes I do have these, you know, type A personality women that I work with. I'm very type A myself. And 
busy, busy, busy during the day, filling my plate up, like go, 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 go. And then I go into my workout and I'm doing this super intense exercise, right? It's like all day, I'm just in this like intensity. (laughs) And so that can actually really impact our hormones because now we're like really, really pushing it and we're overdoing it. And we're kind of forcing our bodies to do something that it doesn't necessarily want to do, but we think that the more we push, the more results we're going to get. And not to blame the ladies who think like that. It's because that's what we're brainwashed right? by the weight loss and the fitness industry, right? No pain, no gain. <laughs> totally. So, yep. Yeah, absolutely. I have clients that look at me and they think I have three heads when I tell them like, please don't exercise for the next two weeks. And they're just like, what? Right. And it's like, yeah, you got to slow it down. Like here you are just overdoing it. Like we're always in this sympathetic mode. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we need to get into the parasympathetic mode, which is like more of the slow mode. It's actually that the campfire mode, which is what it's typically referred to as. And we want to get into that parasympathetic mode because that's where healing will take place. I've learned this from my own experience Mm -hmm. of somebody that has, I have Hashimoto's, it's an autoimmune condition. I really had to revamp my exercise and I had to really learn how to slow down because healing Hashimoto's isn't just about supporting the thyroid, but it's also about supporting all the other hormones and my adrenals as well. And so my high intensity exercise just wasn't cutting it for me. And I really had to slow it down so I could heal. And now, you know, a year later, here I am with so much more energy. I feel so much better. And now I can go back to the type of exercise that I love. Awesome. And and a lot of us are there. And I would say part of the reason why I think for me and many of the women like me, We fear slowing down because our mind is just crazy when we don't do anything. It's so true. Our minds are so busy, right? (laughs) So this is where I always say that we have to really manage our addictions to excitement. Hmm. And sometimes we don't think of it as an addiction, right? When we think of addictions, we think of something like drugs or alcohol or sex or even food, but we don't typically think about how we're actually being in our day-to-day life and how that impacts the addiction that we can have to excitement. Because many of us do not know how to be bored. And it's okay to be bored. We need to be okay with being bored and bring more of that into our everyday because it's this constant addiction that we, like I know for myself, I sometimes look at my week and I'm like, oh my God, like who said yes to all of this stuff? Like, why are all these things on my plate? You know, project after project after project and realizing like it's this habit that I have of constantly filling my plate of doing more and doing more and doing more. And it's just this excitement that is fueling me And that's not necessarily okay because it's taking me away from being present. It's taking me away from healing. It's taking me away from truly transforming my life because I'm not creating any space. That's a brilliant one. We're going to take a quick break from our chat to give a shout out to our show sponsor, Health IQ. And I am so excited to be partnering with them and bringing you forward an innovative insurance company for the American listener. Health IQ helps health conscious people like yogis, runners, cyclists, weightlifters to get lower rate on their life insurance. Just like you save money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on life insurance for living a health conscious lifestyle. Isn't it time that we get rewarded for our good health choices? Now, how do you get started? Very simply by qualifying through the health IQ quizzes. And also, listen to this, if you submit actual training data through the various apps available, you can save additional dollars. To get started now, simply go to stephaniedodzie.com forward slash health IQ and take the test to see if you qualify. And when you get to speak to an agent, mention the code beyond the food to support the show. So get started now on saving money on your life insurance. Now a shout out to our other show sponsor, Muse. And I'm very grateful to team up with Muse to bring you the first tool in the world to help you learn 
to meditate at home. Muse is a wearable brain sensing headband that measure our brain wave and sends the feedback to an app on our personal device. I love my Muse because it transform my meditation practice. I wear it daily for my 10 minute session in the morning and it coaches me through my practice by giving me real time feedback on what's happening in my brain and helping me refocus during my meditation. I love this partnership with Muse because it brings the tool to the first timer and it helps expand the practice of the more advanced meditator. So it's time for you to get your Muse on and learn to calm your mind through meditation. And here's the thing, as a listener of the Going to Beyond the Food show, you get 15% off of the purchase of your Muse. To take advantage of this offer, simply go to stephaniedodzier.com dot com forward slash muse. And again, the URL is stephaniedodzier.com forward slash muse and register through this URL to get 15% off. So join me in my 10 minutes meditation practice every morning and get our muse on and go beyond the food together. How is the impact of our thoughts on our hormone. And that's like a correlation to the excitement, right? Yes. How does our thoughts impact how we distribute and create hormones in our body? So that's a great question. You know, your mood is critical to your success. Hmm. And often we get very drunk in our emotions. And so for many of us, we get really stuck in our current circumstances of, I don't have enough money. I'm not good enough. You know, I don't have the perfect body. I don't have the perfect relationship. I don't have this nice house. I don't have this nice car. And we get stuck in this cycle and this thinking of where we are at and what's really happening versus what's possible. And so that kind of thinking, it causes a ton of stress in the body. Not only that, but it can really start to affect even little things like how your body digests. Because if you're constantly thinking all this negative and thinking about what you don't have and being so consumed about what so-and-so has and having a lot of negative self-talk going on in your head, this is going to internally be a stressor to your body. So when we typically think of stressors, we think of these outside stressors like jobs, kids, you know, bosses, deadlines, things like that. But we don't realize how our negative self-talk about our body image, about our health, about our moods, how that can actually start to impact our cortisol and drive up the cortisol internally, right? Like versus an external factor. So if you're thinking negatively, if you're constantly having this negative self-talk going on in the background of your head, of your brain, you know, that's going to be a huge stressor for you. And not only that, those are the things that now it has this big cascade effect of like, keeping you up at night. It's going to cause you from playing full out in your life. It's going to impact how you show up in your relationships. It's going to typically cause you to just not really move forward, right? You're going to end up becoming very paralyzed and not being able to like make decisions because you're so caught up in, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I can't do that. I don't have this. I need this. And that can just be a really huge stressor. And it starts to really affect all these different areas in your life. And that's, I think, is critical to this whole interview here is that the stress does not have to be physical, like a real touching thing. It can be your imagination. 100%. I mean, how many times do we worry over things that don't even end up happening? Mm -hmm. We can manifest things just with our thoughts. So does our hormones by thinking something, it sends the message to the various glands in our brain that says, oh, we're stressed. Mm-hmm. let's produce cortisol, which then is going to affect insulin and estrogen and da 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 And it's just our thoughts. 100%. 100%. And that cortisol will then also shut down how the ovaries are working, which is how we're producing our estrogen and progesterone. I have so many women that come to me with issues with infertility. Yeah. And they're like, oh, but I, I have a great life and things are great. And my husband's great and everything's well. Like, you know, I don't have a lot of stress, but it's like, as you start to dig a lot deeper, There's a lot of mental and emotional stressors going on. And these things can have a huge impact on your hormones and fertility and and cycle. 
And so that's the type of coaching you work with women, right? It's called ontological, and I'm totally bastardizing it with my French accent. But (laughs) can you dig a little bit more on the type of coaching you do with women and that specialty you have? Yes. So ontology is really the study of being. And so we often get really caught up in this have, do, and be cycle. So most often when people seek out coaches or even sometimes when you you work with certain therapists, you're being told about the things you need to go do, right? And in my training, it's really about who you need to be. And so it's focusing on the being. And that being is wrapped up in a lot. It's wrapped up in our childhood. It's wrapped up in basically our old past self. And that starts to create a lot of different certain habits that we bring forward with us every day in our life that we don't even realize are habits. Like they're just unconscious. We just do them. There's a lot of blind spots that we have going on in our life, like how we self-sabotage certain ways of language that we use. And these are some blind spots that we might have. So this is why sometimes working with a coach is really important because they're the ones that's going to see those blind spots and help you kind of get out of it because you're not going to see them for yourself. Right. So for example, like, you know, I have a lot of clients I work with that they read a lot they do a lot of reading. They're so interested in personal growth and development and they read all kinds of books, but that's all they're doing. They're just reading, right? Versus working with a coach and someone that's going to actually help you dive into the actions that you really need to take. So it's not just having the knowledge, but it's actually having the action to move forward. And this is why coaching is so important. But not only that, it's also focusing on who you're being. So when I coach with my clients, it's not just about, I need you to go do X, Y, Z, but it's like, I really need you to be X, Y, Z, right? Like, who is it that you really want to be? Do you want to be joyful and happy and confident? Like, these are the things we need to start embodying now. And even for myself, like as a coach, as a nutritionist, like if I want to work with clients, obviously they're not going to want to work with me if I'm not eating well, taking care of my Mm well-being, focusing on my self-care, if I'm not confident, if I have a lot of negative self-talk, if I'm not working on healing my pasts and my traumas and dealing with that transformation. I mean, I'm not going to show up in such a powerful way. Clients aren't going to want to work with me. Whereas if I show up confident and joyful and happy and powerful and take care of my self-care and my well-being and my nutrition, and obviously that's going to embody a different energy that I'm going to attract women that are going to want that same thing. That is so critically important. If you've been struggling with health challenges for a long time and you've tried so many things or you want to lose weight and you've been yo-yo dieting for years and you don't know what's wrong, it's likely because you need exactly that, that type of coaching that's going to go beyond the food, that's going to look at who you are being Mm. in the moment and what's impacting your choices and the creation of hormones that create hungers. Like, this is how we get to the root cause. 100%. And, you know, I know we all have wants and wishes and desires that we want for our health. And this is where we really want to make this distinction that a want, a wish, a desire, those are just really nice ideas, whereas a commitment actually has action attached to it. So that's what I really want to achieve with my clients and, of course, with myself. It's about making a commitment and having this action attached to it and really having this clear plan of who I need to be, what I need to do so that I can get what I really want, not waiting till I have the perfect boyfriend, have the perfect house, have the perfect body, so then I can go and do these great things with my life and then I'll be happy. No, be happy now. And that starts with understanding what your commitment is. Is it actually a commitment or is it a want, a wish or desire? And I want to put that into a picture for everybody listening. Let's imagine that you want to lose weight and you're saying, I am going to go in an all-inclusive result when I lose 20 pounds because I'll be able to fit in my bathing suit. Until then, I'm not going to go and I'm going to use that as my reward. Right. The whole process of you losing weight, you'll be thinking about why you're not there now and what's wrong with you and why you can't lose weight. And that will create the stress that will produce the hormone that will 
impact your hunger and your ability to lose weight. Bam. That's how it happens. Yes. 100%. And then this causes us to play really small. We're not playing very full out in our lives if we're waiting for the right time or the perfect body or the perfect boyfriend or the right amount of money. So this is why we have to switch from committing to our current circumstance and really standing for what's possible for our future. And that can be challenging. Totally. So let's get into the solution part because We have to do something so we can be that person that we want to be and achieve the goals that we want to be. So what would you say would be like a three beginning step or this three step process for us to regulate our hormones so our hunger is stable? Okay, so obviously we do want to focus on the food here and really being conscious of just getting in whole foods, making sure we're getting in enough variety, which is key. I always say to my clients, if I were to follow you around for seven days, I can guarantee you're eating the same like six or seven foods over and over and over and over again. So we really want to get in variety. Food is key here. There's this energy exchange with food. So choosing really good quality food, high vibrational foods, making sure we're getting in enough really great quality proteins and fats because those are really essential to balancing out the blood sugar and making sure we've got enough fiber, which can come from our vegetables. So PFF, protein, fat, fiber. So food is definitely important. And that's what's going to actually fuel you. This is what supports your hormones. This is what balances the blood sugar. This is what fuels the brain, supports the heart, combats inflammation. And when we're feeling better and we're eating better, we're obviously going to want to do more things with our life, right? So food is essential. And, you know, also little things that I want to throw in there, like managing your sleep, making sure you're getting good quality sleep, really being conscious of managing that stress, moving your body and being really conscious of that. I would also, you know, throw in something like, avoiding some of those highly palatable foods. So foods that have like a lot of additives or MSG, because again, this goes back to the reward centers of the brain. So really, again, as we clean up the diet and we start to really focus on all the good, clean, whole foods, we end up no longer craving those high palatable foods. So really being conscious of that. On the flip side, so outside of sort of like all the health and nutrition components that we can implement, Let's also look at things like maybe starting a well-being checklist. So this is something that I do for myself and I do with my clients. And a well-being checklist is basically, you know, a list of 10 things that you need to do in your every day to truly feel balanced, calm, focused, in flow, at ease with your life. So it could literally be things like flossing your teeth, you know, drinking your three liters of water eating really well, taking all your supplements, shutting off the computer and and the TV and being in bed by 10 o'clock. You know, make that list of the 10 things that are really going to allow you to function as your best, most powerful self. And then start to track these things. Track it over the week. You know, track how many of those things did you do on Monday? How many of it did you do on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? And keep tracking it for the entire week. And then look back And you can have this sort of data that really shows you like, wow, you know, I did like eight out of the 10 things on Tuesday and I felt phenomenal. Whereas Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I kind of fell off when I only completed three of those things. So you start to recognize the things that are really important to bring into your day that really allow you to feel powerful, calm, and really more in flow with your life. I love that because we have a checklist of how many grams or calorie or how many times we need to go to the gym, but who has a well-being checklist? Right, right. Yes. Yeah. So well-being is so important because it's those little things that as you accomplish them, and this isn't about being perfect. This Mm -hmm. isn't about achieving a score of 10 every single day. This is really about striving to be really excellent at something. And so making that checklist. And if we can follow a lot of those things on that checklist, that's what's ultimately going to lead us to make better choices with our food, with our health, with everything. We're going to come from such a more clear space. Another thing I would also recommend is this is something I do for myself at the beginning of each year. And I write out my vision for 2018 or just your vision for the year and write it as though it already happened. And it is so incredibly powerful to go back and read it as though it's the end of the year and to read all these amazing things you accomplished. 
So I really would love women to spend a good 20 minutes writing out their vision for the year. And there's some really key things I want them to keep in mind here. I want them to include things about time, money, well-being, and love. So write about, for example, this might mean if what you're really wanting for your life is to work less and make more money, then write that. Even if it seems like, oh, but that's so impossible. How is that going to happen? Don't worry about the how. Just write it down. You know, when you write about your well-being, maybe there's a certain aspect of your health. You know, for example, myself with Hashimoto's, when I wrote out my vision, I wrote how my thyroid is in optimal health. I feel energized and vital and sexy and confident in my body. So that's how I wrote it out. So once you write it out, go back and read it over. And it's so powerful to read about what's possible for your life versus the current circumstance. I do that every morning. I I, I have a goal card and I'm looking at it right now because it follows me everywhere. And I have my goals, like my vision of what I want to achieve. And I read it every morning and multiple times during the day. I write it on a little index card and it goes with me everywhere I go. I love that. That's so great. That's really great. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I think like, you know, just going back to the stress management, like Mm -hmm. this is a really important part that we have to start making ourselves a priority and we have to slow the heck down. Like really, we have to find those times in our day where either we can journal for 20 minutes, maybe take a hot bath at night, whatever it is, but you need to be able to sort of come back to yourself and be more integrated with your body. And everyone's going to do that in a different way. And it's not just about sitting in front of the TV and watching Netflix. Like it has to be something on a much deeper level that allows space and quiet and time to truly connect. That is so important and so undervalued in today's society. Yes, yes, it really is. Especially with so many women who are working these, you know, big corporate jobs and they're bringing their work home with them at night. Mm -hmm. And it's just like never ending. And it's just constantly feeling like they have to be on. You have to find that time to just like, what's the cutoff? Seven o'clock, every, you know, all the work stops, eight o'clock, all the work stops, like really make that commitment to yourself. And I want to bring that into the hunger because I did a survey recently. And one of the most popular questions from Taipei women is, I can control and achieve anything in life. But my relationship to food, I just can't figure it out and I can't control it. That's the only area in my life I can't control. Well, part of it is what Samantha's explained today is that your thoughts, your go, 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 go all the time is influencing your cortisol, your ghrelin, your insulin, and it's all behind the scene and you have no control on that unless you fix the mindset you're in. 100%. And, you know, women who are not connected to their intuition is a very scary thing because we are very intuitive creatures. And we need to find ways back to that intuition. And the way that that's going to happen is by creating the space in our lives. So if we're consumed by work, and we're achieving all these things in our life, that's wonderful. But at some point, all of that busyness is taking up the space that you need to really tune into yourself. So slowing down and creating the space, the quiet, like I mentioned earlier about being bored, that's what's going to allow us to connect back to our bodies. Because currently when we're so busy and so wrapped up in this to-do list and the work and the kids and the job and all this stuff, we get really disintegrated from our body. So find a way to integrate back in and that's going to come from slowing down. Amazing. So let me repeat the three step that Samantha talked about. So food, number one, and we've got something coming for you on food. Just a minute, the free thing that Samantha is going to give you, but have eat real food that will give you the nutrition that you need to balance your hormone, well-being checklist, and a vision for yourself. Yes. Awesome. So what do you have for us with regards to food and how can the listener take the next step with you? So I am all about the food, obviously being a nutritionist, being a recipe developer, you know, I spend a lot of time in my kitchen and I just want people to eat really good food and I don't want them to feel deprived. I want them to enjoy food and know that you can eat clean, whole foods and have a variety that's really going to support your health. So I've created a free three-day meal plan of simple recipes, delicious recipes, lots of variety, 
breakfast options, some snack options, lunch and dinner. That's going to help you to create more ease in the kitchen, more simplicity in the kitchen. And more than anything, it's really going to help support the hormones, balance the blood sugar, and really give you the energy to get through your day. Awesome. So they can go to our show notes here, stephaniedoze.com slash 113. And then you will have the link in there to get the free meal plan. And you also have a course on healthy hormone. Am I correct? That's right. Yes. So this is a six week program Mm -hmm. and it's go at your own pace program. And we dive deep into liver detoxification because obviously that's important for metabolizing and supporting your hormones. We dive into gut health, adrenal and thyroid health, Mm. into understanding your cycle and how to sync your cycle. We go into stress management and high cortisol. We really cover it all. We cover all the important bases that really many women are sort of confused about and really don't have that knowledge. And knowledge is so empowering because once we have that knowledge, we can do so much better. And so each week, so there's a different topic. So liver, gut health, blood sugar, adrenals, thyroid, I dive into supplementation, which I always know is such a confusing topic Mm -hmm. for so many women. And so we really cover all the bases. So not only do you get all the recordings and all of those modules, but you get a full 28 day meal plan. There's actually over 65 delicious recipes in there. And you get a guide that is really going to help you understand your hormones and the four different phases of your cycle. There's also great Facebook group support. And I threw in a bonus there. of It's my ditch the pill guide. So if that does relate to anybody who might be having issues with coming off the pill or thinking about coming off, I really guide women how they can get off of that in the most natural way and support their body. And yeah, so it's a wonderful course. And we've actually given a $50 coupon to your community. Awesome. Yes. So you can get the code in the show note. It's beyond the food, but go to the show note, stephaniedoze.com slash 113. Or if you're listening right now on iTunes, on iPhone, you can go right there to the show note and the link will be there for you to just press and go look up the course or get the meal plan. It's all there for you. Perfect. I want to thank you and said that I spent an amazing hour with you. Thank you. We flow together very well. And I'd love to have you in the future again. We can dive into more in-depth topic when it comes to hormone, but you really are the hormone fixer upper. (laughs) Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me on today. Thank you. There you have it, girl. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've enjoyed discovering the one thing you can do to impact your hormone that nobody talks about, which is your thoughts and your emotion and how that impact your hormones through your choices. So I'm grateful that you were here with me. Remember that you can share this episode right from your device so you can impact other women's life in your network right now. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode and you learned something, the other thing you can do for me is send me a review, either through iTunes on your listening device or going through the website at stephaniedoze.com slash 113. It's like fuel for me and also helps me rank the podcast so we can share this message of going beyond the food to other women. Now, we have a great show coming up on Thursday we're going to answer a listener's question that goes as follow. Why do I keep overeating when I know better? If you want to know the answer, you got to tune in to the next show. I love you and I look forward to hanging out with you on the next episode. Did you know that nine out of 10 women are struggling with their relationship to food? Overeating, emotional eating, binging and craving are real. Clearly, the solution we have been taught aren't working. I believe to have food freedom, it means that we must learn to have a relationship with our hunger so we can finally be at peace with food and eat normally without guilt or shame, which is why I wrote the Crave Cure Guide. I want to show you how to have a completely different relationship with food so that you can be in control of what you eat achieve your goal, and be the powerful woman you were meant to be. 
The best part is this book and the step-by-step -step process is absolutely free. To receive your free copy, simply go to stephaniedodzie.com forward slash guide and we can get started right now.